So today we're going to be talking about how to multiply multiple digit numbers, and this is meant to be done as mental math, but in this video we're going to do kind of a visual representation of what's happening. And most of this content comes from Arthur T. Benjamin. He's a professor of mathematics at Harvey Mudd College. Um, a few of you might have seen his TED Talk video. He basically does all these multiplication problems faster than a calculator, and that will be linked in um, the caption. But Today we're going to talk about some of his methods that he has shared online. So the first thing we're going to do is 11 times any two digit number. And again, with enough practice, all of this can be done um, quicker than a calculator. Even this first one, I think, can be done right away quicker than a calculator. Um, we're going to square square a two-digit number um, ending in five. It's very hard to write with this thing, so bear with me. <laughs> so that's the second thing we're going to do, and then we're going to square um, any two-digit number. I'm just going to refrain from writing that, but yeah, the first one is very simple. It takes no time at all. I was pretty baffled by how simple it was. Okay. So let's try 11 times, I don't know, 62. So what we're going to do is take the 6 and the 2 and add them. So 6 plus 2 is 8. So we're going to separate. 6 and 2. So we're taking the sum, which turns out to be 8, and so 682 is the answer. Yes, it really is that easy. Do one more. 11 times, I don't know, 41. Separate the 4 and the 1, take the sum, which is 5, put it in the middle of the two digits. 451. So, what if these numbers add up to more than 9? It's pretty simple as well. Um, all you have to do differently, just let's do 11 times 98. All you have to do differently is when you add the numbers, so let's do 9 plus 8, which is 17. You take that second digit, carry the 1, 9 becomes 10, so it's 1,078. Likewise with something such as 46, We're still separating the 4 and the 6. We add them, that comes out to 10, carry the 1, so the answer is 506. So that was the first method of multiplication. And so obviously it's very specific. It's not going to come up very much in your day-to-day -day life. But if it ever does, now you know a faster way of going about it versus pulling out your phone and using a calculator. So let's briefly talk about why this works. I'm going to call it a proof, but I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. And so when I said most of this content came from Professor Benjamin, um, two of the proofs didn't. I went ahead and came up with some proofs, so we'll do one for this. So 11, let's think of that as 10 and 1 for the sake of this um, video. So taking 11 of something is like taking 10 times that something and then adding 1 times that something. So with that said, let's do an example problem. Do 
11 times, I don't know, um, 24. So let's do 10 times 24, which is 240. And 1 times 24, which is 24, and add them. So you've noticed that the last number is always the second digit. comes from this place right here. Adding 0 in the second digit because basically all you're doing is putting a 0 behind the number. And then when you're adding that number back to a three-digit number, all the places get kind of shifted around. So there's always going to be a 0 here and then the second digit of your number. So that's why it ends in 4. Then we have 4 and 2, which are our two digits, which is 6. Because again, the places get switched around, so because of this 0, everything right here gets pushed to the left. So that's why we always have this number here, because this will always be a 0. And that's why we're always adding the last number with the first number. So 2 and 4, which is 6. And so now you can see how if this was more than 9, you would have to like carry the 1 or 2 or whatever it may be, and then bring it down. So in this case, this was not more than 1, so we just bring that two, bring down the 2, so it's 264. So that's kind of like how to think about it, as in, you know, where this method comes from. So let's do squaring a two-digit number ending in 5. Again, very specific, but it could definitely be useful in some cases. So squaring a two-digit number ending in 5. Let's do 35. 35 squared. So all we do is the number always ends in 25, which is 5 squared. So you can go ahead and write 25. And then we want to multiply the first digit by one integer higher. So 3, we multiply by 4. If we had 5, we'd multiply by 6, and so on. So 4 times 3 is 12. Put that in front of the 25, and that's your answer. Again, very simple. Let's do one more before we get into the proof. 65 squared, put the 25 at the end. We do 6 times 7, which is 42. 4,225. So now I'm going to show you another proof that I came up with. And I'm sure these are floating around somewhere on the internet, but We'll do, we'll go back to 35. 35 times 35. So instead of doing like the standard multiplication, well, the best way to look at this is breaking it apart, as I've found. So we'll do 5 times 5, which is 25. And then we'll do 5 times 30, which is 150. We'll stick in a 0, do 30 times 5 again, which is 150, and then put in two zeros because we're doing 30 times 30, which is 900. So really doing 35 times 35 is just adding all of these numbers. So you'll notice, and I tried these with all of the possible numbers, two-digit numbers ending in five. You'll either have all zeros here and a two, or two fives and a two. So what we're going to do, because we, our number always ends in 25. So we'll just move this 10 right here, because this sum right here is 12. So we'll move the 10 and carry it over here and then we'll bring down the 2. So that's why it ends in 25, because these will always either be zeros or 5s. So we carry the 1, so we have 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus 1, which is 3, plus 9, which is 12. So our number ends in 25, but why do we multiply 
3 by 4 or 5 by 6. So let's look at the number that we got by adding all of these. We got 12. You know, it's getting a little cramped, but we do 12 divided by 3, which is equal to 4. So that's why we multiply by one, int one integer higher, to get this value right here. 3 times 4 is 12. That's how we get that. 5 times 5 is 25. And so that's how we're able to put this number together. And that does work for every two-digit number ending in 5. So that is my proof for that one. And the next one we're going to talk about for our mental math is doing um, squaring a two-digit number. And this would be any two-digit number. Obviously, you'd use the other method if it ended in 5. So this is really just for all the other ones. And Professor Benjamin offers a proof to this one, so I did not have to do anything with that. I just thought it was important to have kind of like a reason as to why it works. But, um, yeah, so let's square any two-digit number. Let's do 38. It's a good one to start out with. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a value to go up from 38 and down from 38. So what I've been doing at least for the past few days is choosing a number where I can get this value either down to a two-digit number ending in zero or up to one um, ending in zero. So I'm going to choose the value 2 to go up or down from. So we add 38 to 2, and we get 40. Subtract 2 is 36. So this part is a little harder, but basically what we need to do is multiply these two numbers. I just drop the 0 temporarily. That's why I like to have a 0 at the end, because you can just kind of get rid of it and then put it back on the number. So in your head, you're going to want to do 36 times 4. So um, when you're multiplying with mental math, it's better to do it from left to right, because we read left to right, we write left to right. So it's actually quicker, even though you know, you're used to starting at the single digits and working your way up. So we'll start out by doing 4 times 3 which is 12, and then 4 times 6, which is 24, and then just carry the 2, so it's actually 144. And then we could just stick the 0 at the end. So the last step is to square your distance, which is our 2, the number that we go up or down from the original number. So squaring 2 gives us 4, so we're going to add 4. So the final answer it's 1, 4, 4, 4. So that is 38 squared. And so we'll do one more example. And then I'll show you the proof to this that Arthur Benjamin provides. And then that'll be it for this video. And we have like two minutes left, so I'll make it quick. Okay a squared equals a plus b times a minus d plus d squared, right? Because if we distribute, we have a squared minus ad plus ad minus d squared plus d squared. So all we're left with is a squared equals a squared, which is a true statement. And our d is equal to our distance. So if we have like 98 squared, then we have in our parentheses 98 plus 2, 98 minus 2, plus 2 squared. And then so that's why this trick works. And so thank you for watching. And also thank you to Professor Arthur Benjamin for um, coming up with all these cool tricks for doing some mental math. So hopefully this can be helpful towards you on you know, any standardized tests or whatever it may be. So thank you for watching.